Well, looks like Christmas came early this year. Let's check out this new Waveform antenna product. Um, so yeah, I think if this doesn't get me signal, I'm not so sure what will. Okay, I had to move my camera back, the probably I've ever had, to capture this in frame, and it's, and it's probably cut off a little bit still. But this is the assembled unit here of both of these um, together on an extended uh, J mount here. So let's go through what they include in the kit. All right, so let me talk about the antennas first. I'm gonna take it off the desk so you can actually see me again. And these are um, each individual um, dual plus. So this is the dual plus duo. And it's basically just having two of them uh, together. So you might be familiar with the log periodic directional antennas, which people have to set up at like 45 degree angles. And, and all that is so that you get the MIMO uh, cross polarization. This gets rid of that complexity because now they're built into a single unit. And then you just aim both of these um, the same direction so that's what's cool about them but it comes this one here is a kit and it um, comes with basically everything that you need to get this mounted up set up and then plugged into your own um, gateway or modem that you have either from t-mobile verizon at&t or uh, like a third party one chester cheetah cradle point pep um, link all that kind of good stuff so this one with the uh, duo comes with an extended uh, J mount so this is longer and then it also has these little legs that go off to help stabilize it These are all adjustable um, They can go at different angles these can pivot and rotate so you can set that up either on the outside of the um, House like on the wall and it can be uh, Pointed upwards or it can be on the roof like the shingles and you know make up for the the pitch of the roof and all that good stuff and so each of these have a cable um, or two cables should I say and they have SMA connectors on them with these little grommets that just for packaging and then they have the bigger grommet that you can slide over to make it weatherproof um, after you screw it in there all right so this also includes their uh, flexi mount system which is this white piece that attaches the um, antenna itself to the pole and what's cool about this is that it has a lot of adjustability built into it so basically it has two direction adjustability I can go here and just loosen up the little hex head that they have here and this is going to loosen it up for up and down and it's got different notches that you can hold and it even has little um little indentation marks that show you the degrees that you're moving it so you can get them the same so this allows me to adjust it here without having to mess with the pole mount is a little bit you know uh, difficult to do especially if you're up on a roof or outside so this is a quick single tool that allows me to go and adjust it and then i can even find exactly where i put it before and then tighten it down so it can go up down and then there's another one right here that I can loosen and that's gonna go uh, left or right or towards and away from the camera so this went together fairly easy it's all straightforward they even include all of the tools that you need for wrenches um, they even have a wrench with a, uh, a closed out end with a swivel on it that came in handy so all these tools are actually included in the kit if you buy it all right so then for attaching that j mount to a wall or to a shingle they have a couple different options here they have lag screws which obviously go straight into wood they also include large uh, plastic inserts if you're going into uh, masonry or something that needs a little bit more uh, support but in addition to those big lag screws they also include these little expanded nuts so i think this would be um, multiple surfaces but one that's hollow behind it and then when you tighten these down it you know it kind of mushrooms out and grabs hold so they include all of that for you and then the cool thing about the flexi mount is that if you don't want to use the um, the pipe or the, the J pipe you can attach that flexi mount directly to a wall and not use the pipe at all so um, very adjustable there with how you want to set it up all right, and then of course once you get it mounted you have to get the cable and that signal back inside your house to wherever your gateway is and so they include of course a couple options on your cabling this is their um, standard cabling this is the shortest length this is a 10 foot cable but you can get 10 and 20 foot length cables and you can get up to 60 feet long so 10 20 30 40 in any you know uh, combination there um, where you can uh, daisy chain the cables together one thing to note is you do want to use as short of a cabling as you can get away with because every foot of cable actually adds to signal degradation or signal loss across it so you know something like 30 feet might be a good target or less 
but uh, on this one you can go up to 60 feet so they give you like three 20 foot cables the nice thing about this cable is that um, they do route it all together so it's a nice uh, package there and then it's uh, pretty flexible especially compared to a lot of other antenna cables and then they break it out and they have it all labeled here um, with the numbers so that is a, a nice setup that they have uh, for this cabling and then to get through a opening or a wall you know in the past they did not have this really cool uh, new cable here this one is a window entry cable I would even go to say it's a door entry as well if it's not used a lot you don't want it rubbing um, over um, you know every day that that type of uh, wear would, would probably wear it out but for a window it is can handle a um, you know double hung window can handle a slider window if it's along the the vertical uh, portion there where it's not being slid over um, but typically a uh, window sill is able to compress and fit the silicone in to it so this allows you to have the um, this part goes outside you attach your cable to it and then this goes through the window and then now this portion is on the inside of the house and you have your connections here for your um, indoor uh, length of cable or if you can get your gateway straight to here you can also do that and now the kit by default also includes the U.FL connectors. These are needed if you want to, these are pigtails that would go on your gateway. So if you have like a T-Mobile gateway or Verizon gateway that has the U.FL connectors on the inside, I have videos how you disassemble that and whatnot, but these will plug into that and that comes included with the kit. All right, so you can see the size difference between these different um, antennas now. The panel antennas down on the bottom are about a year old but they are still very applicable and they have a lot of use cases uh, today that uh, they make maybe even more sense than um, this new uh, dual plus antenna and so you know the real thing here is the smaller quad mini is able to be indoors has suction cup can go on the inside of a window can go outdoors it's versatile it's omnidirectional so it's going to pick up signal from all the way around about equal amounts is not going to be uh, directional so that's great if you are uh, especially if you're traveling with it you know that that's just it, it's always going to get good signal no matter if you're driving and moving all around um, the quad pro is a um, directional antenna and it uh, that's what we'll get into a little bit of details here and what it means is that that one actually might do a better job at um, picking up signal if it's bouncing off from different places so if you're in a hilly terrain or you have lots of trees blocking your view then a panel antenna sometimes works better actually than a log periodic directional antenna so this new um, setup here is very focused so they call it I think um, very directional or ultra directional something like that and what it means is that it is laser focused almost on the direction that they're pointing and it's going to do a poor job of picking up signal from the side or back behind it and there are some benefits to that let's go into a little bit here uh, details on this uh, new uh, dual plus antenna all right so on their website here you can see they do call it ultra directional and it does work on uh, 4 and 5G bands for pretty much all of the US uh, carriers you know the the uh, mid and low bands it doesn't do millimeter wave, but most of the home internet services don't use millimeter wave anyways. You can see here, this is where you can drop down uh, and pick different lengths of cables that I mentioned, as well as do you want that ultra pole mount that that one's on there or do you not? Now you get 5% discount if you use my code NaderTater um, to further reduce this price. Um, but if we go down here and we look at the uh, signal um, details, this goes from 600 megahertz, which is roughly uh, around where T-Mobile uh, N71 uh, band uses. So that's their, you know, kind of standard 5G. And uh, this one will pick that up. And then it goes to about 4,200 megahertz of signal. The Quad Pro, just for reference, goes to like 6,000 megahertz. But I don't think right now there are any um, U.S. bands in that four to 6,000 uh, megahertz range that I'm aware of. I think the highest typical one I see is like Verizon um, with theirs. I think it's around 3,000 or 3,500 uh, megahertz. So this would pick up that. Now the other thing to see here that's kind of interesting is this one shows a 7.1 dBi gain or 8.9 uh, peak. That's not crazy high, but I'm going to go into the details of why that doesn't necessarily 
not that it doesn't matter, but that there's other things to consider here and why this can really uh, do super well. All right, so here's where they show you can use the different cables and the window entry um, cable as well. And then if we keep going here, we can look uh, on some of these other specs. These are just the parts that I've already mentioned before they laid out here. But if we look at the Dual Plus Dual versus the Quad Pro, so that's Quad Pro, Dual Plus Dual up there above it, is the Duo is more directional. And then the average DBI gain 7.9 uh, versus the quad pro actually has a average DBI gain of 7.1 and so what this means is quad pro actually has a, a little bit of an edge on the peak gain but if you look across the frequency spectrum it's the dual plus that actually outperforms it and it's very consistent I'll show you that here just in a second um, and then also the quad pro is less directional so that is a benefit is that it's easier to aim than the dual plus so let's go into the real nitty-gritty details and look at some of these metrics all right so looking at the uh, details here on the dual plus versus the quad pro if we pick the 600 to 900 megahertz uh, range and we look at the gain the dual plus is at 7.2 dbi and the quad pros at 5.5 so that is a pretty significant difference there for the dual plus having a strong edge over the quad pro but if we look at the 1700 to 2700 megahertz, um, they're much closer to each other. And in fact, the Quad Pro slightly edges it out from a um, uh, peak gain uh, standpoint. And then if you get the 3500 to 4200 uh, range, you can see they're basically tied there. And uh, if we go down uh, one line to the azimuth bandwidth, that's basically the um, thing about it as like the cone of signal that it, it's picking up. This one is a 74, or you know, c call it dual plus between 60 and 75 degrees, whereas the Quad Pro is, you know, much wider up to even 165 degrees. Uh, so that's telling you, you know, how much it's really um, picking up, and that's what we'll see here next. And the same thing for the elevation beam width. This is looking at that cone and how uh, tall it is. Uh, from ground level again the dual plus is much more focused and so that drives a bigger difference on the next line which is the front to back ratio and so this is really telling you what's the signal difference between the front side of the antenna and the back side of the antenna and you can see there that the dual plus is probably let's say double the uh, front to back ratio of the quad pro um, MIMO isolation is a um, good thing for an antenna to do and down low the uh, dual plus is a uh, big standout where it is a lot uh, higher of isolation peak but then it is um, similar or actually a little bit lower as you go higher in the frequency range but still again uh, good isolation overall. And then uh, kind of the same story there if we look at the efficiency. Um, this is a good measure of how good the antenna is as well. And you know all these things kind of combine up together so you can't really pick just a single one here. But if we look down there, you know, this um, Dual Plus has that 86% efficiency, which is really impressive actually, um, down at the 6 to 900 megahertz range, whereas the Quad Pro is still a very good 80%. Okay, but now if we look at this uh, peak gain versus frequency, this is where, you know, I see the Dual Plus having a lot of benefits here, and that's how flat of a uh, curve this is, you know, all the way from the 600 megahertz range all the way up to 4,000 or uh, past that. And it's averaging there, you know, I think well, yeah, we just talked about like 7.1 dB on average, and it doesn't have a lot of dropouts there, um, which is really good. And if we compare that to the Quad Pro, way down in the 600, you know, you're pretty low. I mean, the, the graph starts at 4 versus over here, the graph starts at over 6. So that's a big difference in the Dual Plus versus the Quad Pro down low. And the Quad Pro then, you know, kind of stays low and then it peaks around the 2,000 to 3,000 uh, megahertz range. But then it drops back down again before picking up at um, the mid or, you know, higher uh, end of this uh, spectrum as well. So... Um, this is really going to be interesting for me to test to see how well this Dual Plus performs. All right, so now, of course, I know a lot of people are interested in how well does it perform. This data is great, seeing the parts is cool, but 
everyone wants to see what kind of speed it can get us. So that is certainly on my list to get done next is to hook this uh, up. I'm probably going to hook it up to a T-Mobile gateway as well as probably a Chester Cheetah uh, to see how well it performs there so I can do band locking and all kinds of stuff. And I'll try to compare it versus like the Quad Pro antenna so we have an understanding of how different it is uh, for everyone. I'll get into all those details in a future video. So do hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel uh, so you get notified when I put that video out. Now, if you have a question about what I covered today or if you have a suggestion or comment on maybe how I should test it or what you want to see, then do put that in the comments down below. I do actually read the comments and I try to reply to them. So uh, put them down there and then we'll see you uh, next time. Now this is an awkward pause so that you can see all these other videos that you can click on and watch.